What's up everyone, it's Kelly and today I've got another swatch review for you. Today we are looking at two new collections from Zoya. We have their Abundance collection for spring 2022 and then we also have their Natural 5 collection which was actually their transitional winter to spring 2022 collection. If you haven't heard of Zoya before, they are a mainstream salon brand that is 10 free, meaning they are free of 10 of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients and they're also cruelty free Free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. So I'm going to show you swatches of both collections. Just a quick note though, I am using the Zoya Z wide brush for all of these swatches. The default brush that comes with the Zoya bottle is actually a round skinny brush. You can separately get their Z wide brushes and that is the brush that I prefer. I think it just makes the polishes level out a little bit better, but of course it is up to personal preference. I just like their Z wide brush. So that's what I use. So yeah, let's do the swatches first. Then we'll talk a little bit more about pricing and availability. So roll the footage. So as with all of my swatch and review videos, I am using base coat underneath all of my swatches just to protect my natural nail and prevent any stains. Today I am using the Cuccio base coat, so I'll link it down below. So we'll start off with these spring 2022 shades in the Abundance collection. And this first color is called Ellis. It is this really stunning, I wanted to call it fuchsia, but I actually looked up what color Zoya described this as, and they called it a cerise cream, which is a new word to me. So I looked up what cerise means and it means a vivid to deep reddish pink, which is very exciting. I always love learning new words to describe colors, but yeah, it's got this nice warmth to it and it is incredibly opaque. This actually gave me one coat coverage, but I am showing you what it looks like in two. Very impressive formula, very beautiful, any time of year color. Next up, we have the shade Kit, and this is what I would describe as a dusty rose cream. And again, you can see the coverage on these is very, very nice. I think that that's one thing that Zoya does really Really well with these sort of medium shades is they're always super opaque. Now, one thing I did notice about Kit is that it dries down to a slightly darker finish than it looks when I apply it. So just something to keep in mind, it's only slightly darker. It's not very noticeable, but I think that that darker color looks really beautiful as well. Moving on, we have the shade Gwen, and this is a super, super light pink cream shade. It's almost a white, but you can see a very distinct pinky tone going on in there. I was a little nervous about this one. Zoya doesn't always have the most opaque lighter colors. They tend to do really well on their nude shades, but these sort of pastel-y colors can sometimes be hit or miss. And I actually ended up doing three coats for full opacity on this one, but I will say I think it actually gave me full enough coverage in two coats. Now I do have short nails, so that's something to keep in mind, but I think that two coats for a polish like this is pretty impressive. But again, I'm showing you what it looks like in three, just in case you want to see that. And of course, if you have longer nails, you'll probably need a third. Next up, we have the shade Lena, which is this really gorgeous, vibrant, cool toned purple. And I absolutely love colors like this in the bottle, but for some reason, they're never as opaque as I expect them to be. They're always a little bit on the sheer side and this one was no exception. As you can see in that first coat, it was pretty sheer, but I ended up getting just barely full coverage in that second coat. So again, if you have long nails, you'll probably need a third for this one. And one other thing I noticed about this polish is it actually dries down to that sort of semi-matte plasticky finish. But of course you can pop a glossy top coat over that and it will make it nice and glossy. Again, it's just something that I noticed and something that happens a lot with neon polishes. So there might be a little bit of a neon pigment going on in here. Next up, we have the shade Tyler and oh man, I was very excited about this one. If there is one polish that Zoya does right, it is these deep blues. Actually, I shouldn't even say that because I absolutely love their nudes as well, but they always do an incredible job with these deeper, almost navy blue colors. And I think that almost all of my go-to navy blue polishes are from Zoya. And I think I'm going to be adding this one to the list as well. It's not quite a navy, but it's this nice deeper blue. It has a little bit of like a yellowish tone in there, so it doesn't feel too cool toned. And it is just so opaque. Again, one co-coverage, but I ended up putting on two just to show you what that looked like. 
And the final polish in this first collection is Elsa. Absolutely love that name. And this polish is so much prettier in person than it looks on camera. So you can see most of what's going on on camera. It's this really gorgeous blue shimmer that has these larger silver holographic glitters running throughout. They're pretty sparse, but they add a lot of sparkle to the nail. But one thing that my camera did not pick up about these is that it has a duochrome purple shimmer in there. So it looks all blue on camera, but there's this stunning purple color going on as well, depending on the angle of your nail. Now, this one was not very opaque on its own. I ended up needing three coats for full coverage, but I also thought that it would be good to try this one over another color. So I layered it over Tyler and I think it looks really gorgeous that way as well. Of course, you do lose a little bit of that sparkly vibrance because as you layer up glitters, they get more glittery, but I still think it's a really fun polish to use as a topper and I think that this would be really fun to experiment over different colors as well. So here are all of the spring shades together and I'm going to talk a little bit more about my thoughts on the collection after I show you the naturel polishes as well but I do think overall this is a really beautiful color story. It doesn't feel overtly spring but we have these really nice staple colors in there and I think they just look so beautiful together. I think all of those cream finishes would also make a very gorgeous skin. Now let's move on to the Naturel collection. And like I said, this one is a transition from winter into spring. And Zoya always does a really good job of making nudes and neutrals that feel appropriate for certain seasons. But of course, they're also great just to wear any time of year. So we'll go from lightest to darkest. This first shade is called Chelsea and it is a super, super light buff beige color. And as you can see in that second coat, it just didn't give me full enough coverage. So I did need a third not terribly surprising for such a light polish like this. But one thing I noticed, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but I still think it looked a tiny bit patchy after three coats. I feel like I would have benefited from a fourth, but a fourth coat is just too much for me, honestly, especially because I already have short nails and I have light polishes that are three coaters or even two coaters. So wasn't a huge fan of that. Moving on, we have the shade Sutton and this one actually looks incredibly similar to Chelsea in the bottle. And there's actually not too much of a difference when I put it on the nails. I'm going to show you a comparison at the end and then I'm also going to compare it with that neutral shade in the Abundance collection, just so you can see the comparisons. But this one had a little bit more of a pinky tone to it and was very, very slightly darker. So just a nice neutral shade. But again, wasn't too impressed with the opacity here. I did do three coats for full coverage. And again, I felt like I really could have benefited from a fourth coat. I think this one is easier to see on camera how it was still a tiny bit patchy and really needed just a little bit more coverage even on my short nails. Moving now into the more medium tones, we have this shade Evan and this one is a very warm, slightly dusty, medium to light brown shade. And this was actually one that I was expecting to be full coverage in two coats and I only applied two coats, but I actually think that this one required a third coat, which I was pretty surprised about because I think as Zoya gets into the deeper neutral and nude shades, they tend to be more opaque and better quality in my opinion. So I was a little disappointed in this one as well, but don't worry, they're not all terrible. I think these last two, spoiler alert, were a little bit more opaque and what I come to expect from the Zoya formula. So this shade is called Parker. It is the cooler toned medium light neutral shade here. And this one I actually also noticed dried slightly darker than it applied on the nails, but it's got this nice dustiness to it. It feels like a great transitional polish. And I think that as with all of the Zoya shades, to be honest, but I think this one is just really flattering on any skin tone. And now we have the final shade, which is the deepest of the Naturel collection. And this one is actually not a nude. As you can see, this is sort of a deep, dusty rose cream shade. And this one was also pretty opaque. It wasn't quite there on the first coat, but it did give me full coverage on the second. I thought that it looked a little bit more vibrant on the nails than it looked in the bottle. It has a slight dustiness to it, but you can definitely pick up more of that pinky tone in there when it's on the nails. So here is the Naturel set all together. And I'm not hugely 
really impressed with this color story overall. I think that Chelsea and Sutton are just a little too similar to be in the same collection, and I think we would have benefited from having a deeper brown nude shade in there, but I do think that the bottom two shades are really pretty. I like that dustiness to them, and I like that pinky tone to them. I also wanted to show you a comparison of some of the similar shades across the two collections, just because I'm reviewing them at the same time, and we had some colors that looked fairly similar. So the polishes on the left side are from the Spring Collection, and the polishes on the right side are from the Naturel Collection. So you can see overall, I think the Naturel collection is a lot more dusty, but I think the bottom three shades in particular felt the most similar, and I think that the spring polish is the most different out of the two. I'm still not 100% sure why they decided to put these two very light neutral shades together in one collection, because I don't think that that was fully necessary. But hopefully you're able to get a little bit of a comparison going on here and can see which colors you prefer out of all of them next to each other. So yeah, those are the polishes, and I have to say for the Abundance collection, their Spring 2022 collection, I really loved this color palette. I thought it was a nice twist on spring colors with those deeper shades, but we also had some nice traditional colors in there as well, and I think they just flowed very nicely and it still felt very springy to me. But these are also colors that I can wear any time of year, so I really appreciated that. Now, as far as their Natural collection, I have to say I think this was a bit of a hit or miss with me. Generally, I love their Natural collections. The first four sets that they did I thought were absolutely incredible, but this one, it just didn't fully hit the mark for me. I think Zoya really excels at their medium tone and darker tone neutral shades, but with the lighter shades, they tend to be a little bit more sheer and sometimes a little bit patchy. So I think you really have to kind of pick and choose which ones you like best. We did have a lot of similar colors between both collections, so it was actually really interesting to review them together and kind of see side by side which colors I preferred because they just had very different slight color changes to them. So that was really interesting. But yeah, I really recommend for this set to just kind of pick whichever colors you prefer the best. It's not necessarily a terrible thing for a lighter shade to be three coats, but with some of them, I just felt like the opacity still didn't feel like it was there. So these polishes are available anywhere you can get Zoya. They are on their website. They retail for $12 USD there. They're also available from HP Beauty Bar, which is a retailer that I like to use. And there, the 15 milliliter bottles retail for $8.95 USD, and I also have the discount code Kelly you can use to get 22% off your order. But yeah, that's it for my thoughts. I would love to hear from you guys. What do you think of these two collections? Which one do you prefer? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. We can chat about it. If you enjoy my swatch and review videos, please give this one a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Huge shout out to my Cosmic Admirals on Patreon. Amanda M, Rocky Man's daughter, and Paula. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's fun fact question comes from Patreon supporter Allison and Allison wants to know which of the new starter Pokemon in the upcoming Scarlet Violet game is your favorite? Also, have you been playing Pokemon Arceus? It's awesome. You guys know I, I always get into like these very long fun facts of whenever we're talking about Pokemon because I'm a huge Pokemon fan. But if you didn't know, Pokemon just released their ninth generation announcement for Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Very excited for both of them. I can't say for sure which starter I'm going to go with because I always like to know their final evolution and their typing, but in terms of cuteness, I think Sprigatito is the cutest so far. Although I will say I almost never pick the grass starter, so he would have to have a very cool dual typing. Actually, I do love grass dark type, so if he's a grass dark type, I might go with that. But yeah, I guess we'll just have to find out, but I'm very excited that it's coming this year. And as far as Legends Arceus, I actually, I think I mentioned it last month that I hadn't really had a chance to play, but since then I have played a couple of times and I have to say I absolutely love it. It feels very different from the usual Pokemon. Pokemon games. It doesn't feel like a core generation game to me, but I'm still having a lot of fun with it. Definitely a little bit harder because the reason I love Pokemon is because it doesn't really have the sort of mechanics in game where you have to like dodge and hit and do that sort of thing. And there is a little bit of that in Pokemon Legends. So those parts I kind of struggle at, but the rest of it I think is really fun. <laughs> if anybody else is a huge Pokemon nerd like me and you want to talk a little bit more about Gen 9, leave it all in the comments we can discuss. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye!